Okay. I'm supposed to wait a couple seconds. So I am juicing oranges, mandarin oranges, to make orange simple syrup, mostly for my cocoa, and candied orange peels. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, I was festering online. I feel like shit. If you can't tell from the way I look, I feel like shit. I was festering, hanging out online, and decided I needed to be doing something. So I have right here an old fashioned juice matic and I'm going to pan this down, and you're going to be able to see it. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so that's the old juice o -matic. Can you see it? That works better. You can see my garbage can too. And beans. So, you take, I'm doing old stale, there it is, old stale mandarins. I buy them for the husband for lunch and they get too old and he quits doing them and there's a lemon that's rock hard that probably won't have any juice in it. Um, the big, big, big container is a lot cheaper than a small container. You can't see what I'm doing. Okay. This is a 1940s, I think, juice matic 1950s at the most. So you put the first half in down, and you put the second half in like this. I'm doing this backwards using the camera, so excuse me if I can't see what I'm doing. That's what the problem is. It has the little tuck, little stem thing still in place. Okay, so you put this one here, and you come down until it kind of sits, and then you juice. Now, a lot of people, when they juice, only do one half at a time, and it's not designed for that. It doesn't have enough tolerances unless it's a giant, huge grapefruit. You're not going to get all the juice. And you come like that and see how it used the other side to squish. Now if you only want to do one at a time, you can only do one at a time. You're not going to get all the juice out. But more specifically, put it in like this. Everything in Hollywood teaches us to put it like this and grind it because the manuals, that's what you do. That's not what you do with a machine. Put it in like that, juice, and you're going to see that it didn't get, it doesn't get nearly as much juice. I don't know if you can tell or not, but this one has a lot more flesh left, and this one's a lot drier. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, I was online being festery and decided that I needed to be doing something, so... This is what I do with my day. I concoct things to do. Eh, that's not true. So now that one's a lot drier. That's the one that I put in first. And that one's a lot drier, except some of the edges. These are old enough that they're halfway to fermented. And fermented is better, halfway to fermented is better than fresh, it really is. It tastes better in a syrup. It, it tastes better in a syrup. Anyway, so I have half of a cinnamon stick and a pot of, half a pot of water simmering on the stove top. And I'm going to... When the cinnamon has given up all of its flavor, I'm going to throw a cup or two of sugar into it and that would be cinnamon simple syrup right there once it has the right flavor and consistency i'm going to stir it into the orange juice i'm not going to get the orange juice that hot and then it goes in their fridge and it'll get consumed within three or four days there's still a little bit of cranberry in the fridge from making cranberry syrup last week because the husband's been okay he's been drinking these instead of the homemade cranberry syrup. These, by the way, are yummy. Very yummy. And they make amazing wine coolery type drinks. So yeah, somebody, I posted a video on Facebook. I shared a video from YouTube to Facebook 
of the Spoon Lady, and she's a she's a musician who plays spoons. When I was a kid, I used to try to play spoons. I okay. I have not tried this in forty years, thirty-five years since I was probably twelve, but. I used to know how. Not gonna say I was very good at it. That's it. Okay, I'm not I'm not holding them right. Nope. These aren't tuned. Um I have all the rhythm of a dyslexic goose. I have no rhythm. I can't hold a beat. I can't keep the beat unless there's music already going. But I put shared a video of hers because she's talking about her video that went viral a while back and how she got millions of comments and how many people... I go really really slow with this because if you don't it's... this is the counter around it. This is not going into the tub. If you don't go really slow, you make a mess, and I make a big enough mess as it is. Anyway, so she shared about how when her video went viral, a whole bunch of people felt it necessary to make comments about the fact that she doesn't have teeth. And how having or not having teeth should have nothing to do with how you perceive that person. Because humans aren't designed to keep their teeth. Okay, A, we evolved to live to be about 35 years old and our teeth start going away. B, every time you get pregnant, women lose a tooth without really, really good dental care. Every time you get pregnant, you're going to lose at least a tooth. Pregnancy is very hard on the teeth. And there's medications that cost teeth. And there's violence that costs teeth. I have a friend who's lost all of her teeth because a guy hit her in the face. Okay? And she talked about in her video about how people make a judgment call on it. And that judgment call is not on whether or not you have teeth. That judgment call is on whether or not you have the dental insurance to have fakes. Okay? I have fakes. Well, I have uppers. I have the temporary uppers that cost about 185 bucks. They never fit. Ever. I went back dozens of times, was told that I was being too sensitive. I busted a tooth because they didn't fit. I wore them anyway. I busted another tooth because they don't fit. I took a Dremel drill to them and I made them fit a little bit better. I have a pair of visual teeth and when I go out I will put those teeth in. But I don't see a reason to put those teeth in for a video. In all honesty, they're uncomfortable, they don't fit, they're annoying, and I lisp when I wear them. I can't eat with them in. I have to take them out at restaurants, you know, politely. Mm -hmm. And then don't smile at anybody because, you know, you don't have your teeth in. Yeah. People who have good insurance do not understand not having good insurance. There was a guy at my last corporate job who got fake teeth, and he was like, Oh, just go back in and make them fix them. Like, I went back in. They said they're done. This is what they gave me, and if I want anything else, I have to take it to a different dentist out of system, and it's going to cost me six to $800. Oh, no, mine were completely included. Dude, you've got Blue Cross through your wife's insurance. Yeah, they're included. I'm happy for you. They're not included for me. Okay, for me, I get one sizing, and I get one secondary follow-up, and that's all I get. Okay? Now, Michael has Portland insurance, which we haven't used yet, except for a few medical things for me, but, and his surgery. Okay, we have used it. We haven't gotten onto a maintenance schedule, you know, where you're going in regularly kind of shit. And we haven't done anything dental yet because we don't have the room in the budget. And that's that's one of the things that's always hurt about insurance. Okay? Anytime we've ever had insurance, we've never had the money for the co-pays. 
just to use dental with his insurance as near as I can figure and you know it, it's always different when you go in you think you have it figured out you go in and it's different but our copay is 40 bucks which means every time you go to the dentist it's 40 bucks the initial appointment is covered you know all those original initial x-rays and oh that cup is full that was almost a disaster so it just keeps filling up and if I'd have squeezed one more it just would have overflowed okay so I have my water and my sugar there and I'm not putting this orange juice into that until the last minute so I need to strain this I can do this without making a huge mess because you know anyway as near as I can tell it's 40 bucks for the copay and the initial visit is covered that's fine but reading through everything it looks like basic drill and fill is $60 well that's only a $20 savings off of doing it without insurance Twenty to thirty dollars savings, but it is a twenty to thirty dollars savings. Gas is not covered. Nitrous. I am dental phobic. It's one of the few phobias I actually have. People think that I'm phobic about a lot of things, and it's like I'm not phobic. I'm averse. I just don't want to bother. But I am dental phobic, and going into a dentist's office is a panic attack, and I take volume for that. And I like gas because it knocks me out and I don't have to think about it. But more importantly, when we talk about knocks out, any dentist who pokes around in my mouth for three and a half minutes refers me to an oral surgeon because I had the shattered jaw. You can see the, the difference in the jaw, okay? Um, because my teeth are weird. Because I don't have the proper dentin, which is why I have so many cavities. That was probably my mother not having proper nutrition when she was pregnant. Um, and because I'm a bleeder, you stick a needle in and it just starts gushing. Okay. And dentists don't like bleeders. Just trust me on that one. I've had dentists absolutely freak out. I've had some amazingly bad dental experiences. We'll just put it that way. Okay. So every dentist I go to. The last dentist I went to was in Hawaii for this tooth that was broken. She took one look at my mouth. She went, poke, poke, poke. She goes, oh dear, you are a bleeder. And I went, yeah. And she's like, I'm going to have to refer you to an oral surgeon. He's on the island once every two weeks. We'll book you for the next appointment with a broken tooth. So I walked around with a cracked tooth with a raw nerve for it wound up being six weeks. And it was a good three weeks before we made contact with the dentist. So it was a couple of months of... of just raw nerve pain. Anyway, every dentist I go to refers me to an oral surgeon. According to our insurance packet, that might not be covered. Can't tell. It's union insurance. It's city union insurance. I will be surprised if it's not covered, but I can't see where it is covered. What I see in their paperwork is emergency oral surgeon is covered. But I don't see where using an oral surgeon as your basic dentist is covered. Okay. People who have good insurance don't understand what moderate insurance is or what bad insurance is or what no insurance is. And they have an unreasonable expectation of just do it. Especially the older generation who's always had good insurance, who's always had access. They've never gone five years with nothing, okay? They don't understand. They don't have a process, they, they, a mental process for understanding. Anyway, so I shared her video on teeth, on why does it matter, on societal expectations, blah, blah, blah. And somebody I know that I know in real life, in analog, he friended me. No comment. The only other thing I shared in the last two days, shared some chocolate yesterday and I shared a, I'm here, I'm queer, and my pain levels are moderate to severe. I usually don't use a self-identifier queer because I'm not that out there. 
but I'm as I get older I don't give a damn about other people's expectations that, that's a common theme now by the way it comes when you're 50 it, it's a badge of being 50 yeah anyway somebody that I know not a friend friend but somebody that I've worked with somebody that I enjoy their content from time to time you know they're not somebody I unfollowed they're there's somebody in my feed defriended me without comment okay uh, you're young and you're beautiful I get that so somebody sharing about being older and not having teeth upset you I that's part of the problem that's part of society Anyway, I have six, seven more of these things to go. This is what I'm doing. My back hurts. Standing here hurts. Then after I finish, I'll take these. I'm going to use a different one. I'll take these and I'll drop this whole thing into a pot of simmering water. And I'll simmer it once. And then all of this will peel off really easily. It'll just come right off. Okay. And then I'll simmer this another time. When making candied orange peels, it's best to simmer three times. Um, four times is not excessive. And it's just a put it in, let it set for a minute, take it out. Put it in, let it change the water, reboil the water. Put it in, let it set for a minute, take it out. The reason is to get that bitter pith flavor out. And these are incredibly thin skin, so they'll make good candied orange peels. Um, and then I'll simmer them in sugar water. Once, they're, once they've been boiled down three or four times, or parboiled three or four times, I'll simmer them in sugar water, slightly stronger than simple syrup, for probably an hour, maybe two. It, there's so many variables. The amount of moisture in the skin, where my pot decides simmer is versus where it isn't. You know, there, there's variables. You have to do it by braille. You have to know what the end result looks like before you begin. And it just squirted out the side really bad. Can you hear all the sound effects it's making? I don't know if you can or not. It's making all kinds of squish hiss. And that'll get me candied orange peels and candied syrup. Or sugared syrup. Sweetened syrup. Simple syrup. I can talk. You can tell when I'm in pain because my words start moving around. You really can. And it's been almost 20 minutes. I think I'm going to call it good. I follow one person on YouTube who regularly... Actually, I follow a couple of different people on YouTube who do it. They regularly post hour and a half long videos. And they have followers that follow their hour and a half long videos. If you want longer videos, let me know in the comments. If you want shorter videos, let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think about the length of the video in the comments. Yeah. I guess I'll keep talking until I get to the end of these. That makes sense, right? So it's the holiday season. I am Coptic. The hubby is Anglican. Which makes for... Santa Day is in December. Christmas is not in December. Christmas starts December. Okay, what Western Christianity calls Christmas Day is the first day of Christmas. You know, that whole 12 days of Christmas thing. And then Christmas is around about the 7th. Sometimes it's the 6th. It's been the 8th once. Somewhere in there, depending on how the calendar breaks down count 12 days from Christmas Day, you know, 26, so four more days is, yeah, it's like the 7th, it's Christmas, and that's a High Holy Mass, not a, a party day. If you know anybody who's Orthodox or Coptic, any of the Orthodoxes, I believe, I'm not positive because I'm not any of the Orthodoxes, I'm non-Orthodox, Tawahito, Coptic. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Anyway, if you know anybody who's on that schedule, plan to visit them during the 12 days of Christmas. Because during the 12 days of Christmas, you're supposed to give away presents. 
if somebody comes and visits you, you give them a present. Now, right about now, if you showed up at my door, I'd probably go looking in the pile of stuff around here and go, oh, hey, that's a really nice bag. You can have that. You want this gargoyle? Because I don't have anything set up. In the past years, I've had all my little packages all set up on the sideboard. And, you know, the different wrapping paper tells you kind of what's in it. This is chocolates. This is a book kind of stuff. Um, but if somebody comes to visit on the 12 days of Christmas, you give a present. Which is the opposite of people coming and giving you presents. I don't know. I'm not thinking clearly. I feel like I'm not thinking clearly. I don't know if I'm communicating that I'm not thinking clearly. But my brain is really, really fuzzy right now. And it's taking just about all of my concentration to do this. Without trying to be coherent about Christmas. I have in the past done the whole Feast of the Nativity, which is a 40-day fast of the Nativity, which is a 40-day fast like Lent. Coptics have three periods during the year where they do a 40-day fast. That, lemon, I don't think that's good. I don't know. If, yeah, you can see the brown tones. I don't think that's good. So that was one lemon that went to waste because it didn't get got to in time. This is a mess that I'll have to clean up later. I've got to wash this now. I'll do it as soon as I turn off the camera. I've got to wash my hands before I can touch the camera. So I'm washing the knife. You can see my butt. I'm wearing a skirt today. I wear a skirt as a house coat. This is a heist carbon steel knife. And if I leave the acid on it for even 10 minutes, it'll start to rust. I use a lot of these. Hold on, let me dry my hands. They are my favorite knives. If you find them at a thrift store or a garage sale for under a couple of bucks, grab them. They're amazing knives. I also have a really nice knife set. But it's, I'm, they're the blocks right there. But these are high carbon and you have to get the acid off. So now it's clean. And now I can push the button. Anyway, this was really more rambly than I intended. So says 22 minutes. I didn't talk nearly as long as I thought either. Anyway, that was my rant on teeth. That was me juicing some oranges to make orangeade. Oh, here's one for you. Sunny Delight. Everybody likes Sunny Delight, right? Sunny Delight is orange aid, like lemonade. Okay, people are like, that's not real orange juice. Well, of course it's not. It's orange aid. Okay, and when you make lemonade, for every cup of juice, you put in a cup of sugar and two cups of water, maybe three. For orange aid, for every cup of juice, I poured it on the floor. I missed. I don't know if that showed up on camera or not, but I have a big mess that I have to clean up now. Luckily, my sock absorbed most of it. Anyway, Sunny Delight is orange aid. And for every cup of orange juice, you put in a cup of sugar and two to three cups of water and you have Sunny Delight using mandarin oranges. That's exactly the flavor of Sunny Delight. Maybe a little lemon if you want. Mountain Dew is tangerines with a hint of grapefruit, but mostly tangerines. Anyway, that's your not quite useless trivia of the day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.